What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, yeah, it's time to go and redo the release schedule for Marvel Champions. Marvel Champions has gone into a really nice release cadence. We're getting stuff thick and fast. It is awesome. It's also quite easy to get confused and lose track of exactly where we are. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. That's where I come in. Now, Right now, we should have recently seen the release of the first wave of X-Men stuff. Remember, we've gotten to the point now where they firstly release in pairs, the packs, but they also released a bunch of stuff together. So we had Mutant Genesis, the big box for X-Men, that released very recently. But at the same time, we also got the hero packs for both Cyclops and Phoenix. So there was kind of like a, a big X-Men dump all at the same time, which was lovely incidentally. It was a lovely dump. I am all in favor of this. But there are some other cool things coming as well. We have had some other packs released and I'm sure they're going to do what they always do. They're going to wait for me to make this video and somehow they're going to know. But before I get to upload it, they're going to reveal another one and I'm going to have to add it in at the end of this video and boo! Never mind, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure I will cope. But let's start off in the order in which they were announced, so we don't have release dates at the moment, I'm sorry. What we've got is Mojo Mania. Now, this is a scenario pack, and remember, scenario packs are quite a lot rarer than we tend to see with your hero packs. So, it's always kind of a, a bit of a celebration, when we get ourselves a scenario pack. And I will say that the designers really do seem to be going out of their way lately to try and make sure that the scenario packs are pretty gosh darn awesome. So what we've basically got here are a bunch of episodes that you can play individually or that make up a campaign. So starting off, we've got a thing, and we're not going to go through these in huge detail, obviously. We've done a video about this. Go and check that one out. This is more just a reminder of what's coming and roughly what it is. If you want me to go into detail on any of the packs, you know where to find them. So you've got the fight against Magog, but it's not your regular fight. It's all about gaining, well, favour, I suppose is the way to put it. So you've got two environments, the champion and the challengers, and you need to try and get ratings counters on them, and then flip, and then win. And that's pretty gosh darn good. So it's not your traditional take down the enemy, take down the villain. If you take down the Gog, you reset the hit points, but you get free ratings counters. But then everyone gets an encounter card and round and round we go. It looks fun. You've then got to fight up against Spiral, who you can't actually take down. Spiral cannot take damage or be stunned, and you can't remove threat from the main scheme. You need to get Spiral into a cornered stage, and that means that you are playing around until you end up with a cornered treachery card where you can flip Spiral to her cornered side. It's not that easy, ladies and gentlemen. It's not that easy. And then you've got to fight against Mojo, who basically is making you fight through a bunch of genres. So you do have the Wheel of Genres that after the encounter deck resets, if there are no set-aside modern encounter sets remaining, you lose. Otherwise, you flip and you get a new genre. <laughs> and then you have to fight through some theme stuff like crime scene investigation or law and order. All very much themed after TV genres, which again, if you're familiar with the comics, should seem pretty gosh darn familiar. That was but a taste of what's in the Mojo Mania pack. Like I've said, I've done a, a more thorough look at it. It looks incredibly fun. Although it is worth noting in that set, you also get Longshot, who is basically a... Like a one card encounter set that actually goes in the encounter deck, but helps you out. It's basically like a, a very small way to lower the difficulty. Now, we're also getting Wolverine. And look, I think at this stage, we can all probably agree, Wolverine is the one that most of us have been waiting for. I'm not saying Wolverine is everybody's favorite. Not saying that at all. But I absolutely am saying we've all been waiting for Wolverine because Wolverine is awesome. Worth pointing out, all three of the packs I'm showing you right now are listed on the Asmodee website for the 11th of November, which is a Friday and would be a kind of standard date. 
but they generally release two packs at the same time, not three, so take those dates with a gigantic helping of salt. Now, you think Wolverine, and you basically think, oh, lots of healing and things of that nature. Yeah, Wolverine looks good. So you've got Logan that on setup, you search your deck and discard path for Wolverine's Claws and put it into play. Wolverine's Claws, of course, being a permanent upgrade that lets you exhaust Wolverine's Claws, choose an attack event in your hand, take damage equal to its printed cost, and play it for free with piercing. Yeah, Wolverine doesn't mind taking a bit of damage. And then you've got healing factor on the hero. After the player phase begins, you automatically heal to damage. And I love this. We've got cards like Adamantium Skeleton, which give you plus four hit points and plus one attack and piercing, which is pretty good. We've got cards like I Got Better. When you would be defeated by an enemy attack, you put your hit points to five, ready and discard it. It's an upgrade, and I'll be honest with you, it looks pretty gosh darn broken. We've got Berserker Barrage that lets you deal four damage to an enemy, but if you defeat them, you can take two damage and do it again. Uh, I'm really, really excited about Wolverine. It looks cool. Obviously, we're talking aggression out of the box. Why would you not? And we are back to that stage now where these heroes do tend to come out of the box with a new encounter set as well. This time around, we've got Lady Deathstrike. And again, this all makes perfect sense. Why would we not get Lady Deathstrike in a Wolverine hero pack? It's too perfect, ladies and gentlemen. It's too perfect. And she's got Quick Strike and she makes you discard a random card from your hand when she attacks. And yeah, looks pretty good. And then the final one that we've actually had revealed, unless I have to add one in on the end, which I'm assuming I will, we've got Storm. What does Storm do? Control the weather. What does a hero pack force you to do? Control the weather. Now, the way I tend to play card games, I tend to go turbo aggression. So for me, Wolverine just looks fun. But Storm does not look like a slouch. So basically what you've got is you begin the game with a weather deck. And during the setup, you choose support from the weather deck and play it. And then when you're in hero mode, you've got an action that lets you swap the weather support in play and resolve the special ability on the weather. So you've got basically a bunch of different ways to, to have the weather to work. So clear skies is permanent. Everyone's got stalwart and you draw a card as a special. Yes, these skills affect you and the villain. Of course they do. It's the weather. Hurricane gives everyone Retaliate plus one of a special skill that removes two threat from a scheme. Thunderstorm gives everyone plus one attack and has got a special skill that deals two damage to an enemy. And Blizzard gives every character minus one attack. And as a special, you choose a non-elite minion and you blank its text box. And obviously, the whole theory here is playing around with the weather. We got the zero cost event Weather Goddess. Let's you swap your weather support in play with a support of your choice from the weather deck and resolve the special ability. And then you've got cards like Torrential Rain, as an example, that you remove free threat from among schemes in play. But if Hurricane is in play, you resolve its special ability. So it's very much a, you know, get the right weather in play. And partly it's a special skill. And partly it's the permanent effect. And partly it's other cards you want to use. Now, obviously, coming out of the box as leadership, and we've got cars like Mirage and Pixie coming in here as well, which is rather lovely. And then we've got another encounter set here, which happens to be the Shadow King. And the Shadow King looks super duper interesting. While a control minion is played, a Shadow King can't take damage. And when revealed, you search the encounter deck and discard path for a copy of the possessed attachment and reveal it. And Possessed goes on to one of your allies, and it's a controlled minion with a blank text box with thwart equal to scheme, and you attach it to the ally with the lowest thwart without Possessed attached. Basically, the Shadow King keeps taking your allies, turning them into his own minions, and while they are controlled minions, the Shadow King becomes invincible. Yeah, that looks kind of interesting. Like I've said, all of these are currently slated for release on the 11th of November. As it stands at the moment, that's true. I don't believe we should be getting all three of these on the same day. Not that I'm going to complain if we do, obviously. But that's what we've got so far. And things are looking fun. If any others get revealed, I'm going to pop them in here. 
And who are we kidding? There was no chance, no chance that I was actually going to get to post in this video before a new one got revealed. But I'm not particularly upset. Because the new one that got revealed is Gambit. And I haven't really talked about this much on the channel. But when I was a kid, Spider-Man, Gambit, Punisher. They were like my big three superheroes. I am delighted. So we've got Remy LeBeau. That lets you look at the top two cards in the encounter deck, discard one of them, and remove threat from a scheme equal to the number of boost icons, which is phenomenal because you're also, you know, you're not just getting rid of thwart, you're stacking the top card of the encounter deck to a degree. And then you've got Gambit the hero, who can charge the card, plays a charge counter, and throw the card. When you play an attack event, remove up to three charge counters from here, and that event deals plus one damage for each counter removed. But both of those are, are taken account of. So you've got your thwarting in alter ego mode, like the Thieves Guild. After you resolve that ability, remove one threat from a scheme, and if that's the last one, draw a card. And Creole Charmer, remove three threat from a scheme, if it's the last one, confuse the villain. But then you've got Gambit with stuff like Charge Card, deals 4 damage to the enemy, and then if you removed at least 1 Charge Counter, you get ranged, 2 you get Piercing, 3 you gain Overkill. And then you've got really fun things like Royal Flush that places a Charge Counter on Gambit. Yes, there are other ways to place Charge Counters, and you deal 0 damage to an enemy 3 times, but of course if you use Throw the Card, then you can do 3 damage to an enemy three times, which is nuts. And then, of course, you've got stuff like Rogue, a four-cost ally, that reduces the cost by one for each charge counter on your identity, so can potentially be free. Oh, and if you haven't guessed, it's Justice out of the box, but I'm assuming you probably guessed that. And I should also mention you do get an encounter set in here like you would usually imagine. It is Exodus, who looks kind of weak initially, but you've got Psionic Shield, that essentially gets attached to him, and then when you would defeat him, you get rid of Psionic Shield, you've got to do it all over again. And Herald of Avalon, the side scheme, that when you defeat the side scheme, you grab Exodus back out again. So, yeah, Exodus just keeps coming. Right, let's go back to the normal ending of the video. Let's face it, this was always going to happen. And other than that, I'm just going to say, it's over to you guys now. Tell me what you want to see from these packs. Tell me which ones you're excited for. Tell me how much you're enjoying the X-Men stuff we've already got. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Marvel Champions and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.